the book of Luke. Luke in chapter 24. So this time around, I'm going to go slightly faster. Because we are friends now, right? We're friends. We are friends. <laughs> You've got to be my friend, yeah? So Luke and 24. Luke and 24. Are you there? Luke 24. I'm going to read verse 25. Luke 24, 25. Luke 24, verse 25. Are you there? Are you there? Good. Don't worry, I've told you. You're going to open a lot of scriptures. We said it at the beginning. Verse 25 says, Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have what? Spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. Will, will it not be good? You know, when it says all that the prophets have spoken, guess who the prophets were? This prophet that Jesus is the one talking here, by the way, after he rose from the dead. Guess who those prophets were? Uh, Moses, Zephaniah, you know, good, yeah, good, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, yeah, so when he says, when he says the prophets, he's therefore talking about their Bible, yeah, you know, the Bible, as at the time Jesus was talking, did not contain Matthew and after, yeah, so the, in other words, when he's saying the, all the prophets have said, he's saying what is written in your Bible, the, the Bible then wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah? Good. Now, is that clear? Good. So, verse 25 again. O fools and slow of hearts to do what? Believe all that the prophets have spoken. spoken. So instead of all that the prophets have spoken, we can say all that the Bible is about. Is it not? So we can say all that the Bible is about. So let me ask you a question now. What are you meant, how will we know, according to Jesus, if you get what the Bible is about. Stay in that verse. How will we know if you get or grasp or understand what the Bible is about? What will you do? In that verse. In just that verse. Believe. So when you read Genesis, what is meant to be the end result? Believe. When you read Habakkuk, what should you do? Believe. When you read Isaiah, believe. Why did Isaiah write Isaiah? So that you can believe. Right? Why did Moses write Genesis? So that you can believe. Are you clear? Now, so if you read your Bible and then you see in the Bible where it says, you should bring a turtle dove. Should you bring a turtle dove? No. No. Why did they write about the turtle dove? So that you can believe. The turtle dove is a way of teaching to believe. It's not for you to do. It's for you to believe. When you read Genesis to Malachi, what is it that comes to mind normally? Do. I should do, do, do. So there are 10 commandments. There are 623 commandments. Thou shalt, 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 yeah? So it looks like you should do, 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 do. But actually, when you sit down to understand it, what should it inspire? Believe. What was the problem that made Jesus call his disciples fools? They were slow to believe. It means they were quick to do. Yeah? So they were quick to do, but they were slow to believe. You are slow to believe. In other words, it's possible to read the Bible and yet not know what the Bible is about. Yeah? The Bible is, uh, the message, the Bible has an intent. What is the intent of the Bible? To make man believe. believe. When a man does not believe, what does Jesus call the man? Fool. No. There's another name he used as was. Fool. Yeah. It's not a bad word. It's a descriptive word. Yeah. So it says in verse 25, All fools and slow about to believe all that the prophets have what? Spoken. Now, what did they say? Next verse. What did they say? Ought not Christ to have? Suffered. Stop. Look up. When you read your Bible, what did the Bible say? What is the message of the Bible? Ought not Christ to have suffered. What is the message of the Bible? Ought not Christ to have suffered. So if you read and you cannot see the sufferings of Christ, that is not what the prophet said. Are you following? Yeah? 
So if I read and I see anything apart from ought not Christ to suffer as my conclusion, I have not read properly what the prophet spoke. There? Good. Don't go quiet on me now. Now, so it says, uh, ought not Christ to have? So let me ask you, what did, who did the prophets talk about? Christ. Christ. What is the subject matter of the Bible? Christ. Christ. When you properly understand it, how do you test that you understand it? By understanding Christ. Yeah? So, is the Bible, is every page in the Bible about Christ? No. So again, I know we've said the same thing. Therefore, you know where to concentrate by seeing what is said about Christ. If it's about Christ, concentrate. If it's not about Christ, move on. Yeah? If you are quick to believe those things are not about Christ, you believe nothing. You should be quick to believe and understand. So in other words, you understand your Bible in the light of what it says about Christ. Good. So say with me, the Bible, the Bible. is a Christ-centered book. It's a Christ-centered book. Remove Christ. It is, dark. it is dark. Don't forget that. So the Bible is a closed book when you remove its subject matter. Its subject matter is not actions. Its subject matter is a person. Christ. The content is about the activities of that Christ. What is called is work. Now, so uh, verse 26 says, Ought not Christ to have what? Suffer these things. So those things they spoke about was for Christ to suffer. Bring an animal that you then kill. What does it mean? Christ should suffer. It doesn't mean bring an animal. Yeah? The way they... Th See, they say, you know, you know in nursery school? A for... B for... Butterfly. Coconut. C for coconut. Now, but of course, when you started working, when you started working, do they at work tell you A for... No? They expect you now to apply A for apple. You write letters. You, 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 yeah, you respond to correspondence. But we started from A for Apple. Then you start working, you discover that it has nothing to do with Apple. <laughs> so we taught you A for Apple only to attract you. But the real intention has nothing to do with Apple, Gova, Mangoose, Macaroni, or anything. Yeah? So the same thing. So the Bible uses a language to attract. But its intention is not what you are reading in, uh, uh, literally. So, bring an animal that you slaughter. So, anytime you hear slaughter an animal, kill an animal, he's talking about the death of Christ. Not, ah, if I sin, I'm going to bring a turtle dove. No, 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 no. It's like saying A for apple when you go to work. Everybody be like, can you please return this guy to Nazareth school? <laughs> now, anyway, so, ought not Christ to have what? Suffer these things and to... Enter into his. How many things about Christ? Two things. Number one, suffer. Number two, enter into his glory. Number one, suffer. Number two, enter into his glory. And that is all that the prophet said. That means, you know, when you look at the totality, the summary, when you try to synthesize it and say, okay, what do these things mean? This big book, what does it mean? Its intention is to reveal Christ. Seen in two dimensions. One in his suffering and the other in his glory. Are you there? Good. Now, so that's Jesus is talking. Look at verse 27. And beginning at what? Moses. Beginning at Moses. What does it mean to begin at Moses? Genesis. Genesis. So it started at Genesis. So in the book of Genesis, yeah, of every tree in the garden you may freely eat. What is that talking about? Believe. Christ. Believe in Christ. It is not talking about apple. Ah, there were two trees in the garden. It was an apple tree. And Adam ate the apple. Not for school. That, there, actually there was no apple anywhere. Yeah. The, it says, do you know I believed? Someone says, ah, why did God create two trees? You missed the point. You saw a tree where there was none. It says, there are two things you should see. What do you see in Genesis? Sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. Sufferings of Christ, the glories to follow. If any should suffer, it's Christ. If any should rise, it's Christ. And I'm to believe that. Now, that's the Bible. Otherwise, you will be talking vain babbling. Okay? So, it starts from page one. So, right from page one, it is easy. To, page one of the Bible is where many people get lost. 
You know, many of us, we think the Bible is a book of astronomy. In the beginning, the Spirit of God over the waters. And God said, let there be light. He's talking about Christ. Christ. <laughs> yeah? And there was light. Who is the light of the world? Christ. Christ. He's talking about Christ. Do you get the point? Yeah? He's talking about how God gave light to the world. Let there be stars in the skies. Talking about Christ giving light to the darkness in the world. What is the earth that was dark? Men that have not yet believed. Did you get it now? Otherwise, you'd be like, mm, no, it was the earth was created in 6,000 years. No, it's 5,000 years. No, it's 10 million years. That's geography. Believe me, I'm a student of science. I could go into argument with you on those kind of stuff. But as a minister of the gospel, I look at that Bible. Jesus already said, it's an old fool's law of art. In other words, they, I am a good student when I can quickly locate Christ in the pages of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah? So it, it says here in verse 26, ought not Christ, you know in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our own. Amen. Who is he talking about? Okay, you're slow to get it, but you should get it quickly. What is he talking about? Christ. Because Christ is the image of God. The Bible says it. So Genesis 1 is not about the creation of man. Genesis 1 is about God introducing Jesus to humanity. That is the man in God's image. You know Jesus is the image of God, right? Okay. Christ is the image of God. The Bible says it. Yeah. So Christ is the image of God. So he said, let us make man in our image. He wasn't talking about who was made first. Was it the guy or was it the girl? Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's not a class in anthropology. It's not a class in sociology. It's not a class in history. It's, it's not, in fact, you can find things that are not historically true. But they are communicating the message. <laughs> the message is Christ, his sufferings, and his what? Glory. Resurrection, his glory. Christ. When I look into this Bible, I am not looking for sick who are bothering. I'm proud if I'm looking for sick. This is a sealed envelope addressed to Jesus. My job is to have the revelation that it's about Christ. I should be quick to believe that. So that when I go into it and I teach it, I teach Christ from it. You know, you see your condition? No matter how things get, the dark things get. No, I'm in the Mary clay. You are not the one in the Mary clay. Jesus buried in the earth is Mary clay. Out of the Mary clay is resurrection out of the dead. Okay, see, this thing I'm saying is important if you're not going to be a vain babbler. Yes. Yeah, so we said here in Luke 24, 26. Ought not, ought not, the certainty of it. You know what he's saying? How could you be so slow? Please, look at it again. Who is Jesus rebuking? His disciples. So, is it possible to be with Jesus, physically with Jesus, for years and still not get what the Bible is about? Yeah. Yes. Someone said, if only I have 30 seconds with Jesus, everything will turn. It won't turn. <laughs> His disciples proved it. They were with him. And the guy, Jesus was just listening. Like, ah, 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 ah. You know, where pastor comes from, they will say, how could you be so depe? So slow. Why, why didn't you see it? But you know, Jesus, it's easy for Jesus to say that because when you and I look into those pages, you're like, ah, I can see cashew note. <laughs> Coconut tree. It's about the moon. The moon shines. It's about the sun. But remember, Malachi then talks about the sun of righteousness. Rise with healing in his wings. It's Jesus. Yeah? So the, the book has somebody that is about Jesus, two things about him is death and his glory. So when you read the Bible, you are watching for death and glory. So every time you read the Bible, imagine there's a teacher whispering, look for the dead, look for the glory. Look for the dead. But, you say, ah, but he talks about Zerubbabel, look for the dead and look for the glory. But he mentioned the Red Sea, look for the dead and look for the resurrection. If you can't find it, skip. Yeah? Now, manna. God will give you manna. But Jesus said, I am the true manna from heaven. Do you want manna? I've got manna. I have Jesus. He is the bread from heaven. He said, Moses did not give your fathers the true bread from heaven. But I am, John 6, that real bread from heaven. 
Do you get it? So when you're reading for 40 days, there was looking all over the place. Don't turn it to Hollywood, Nollywood, Gollywood, Bollywood. No. Look at what Jesus said about the book. Jesus has given us the summary of the book itself. The one, it says, search it for the speak of me. The speak and the speak of me. So find any, that's why you cannot go to it and see Esther. To see Esther, you've seen nothing. Yeah, now, so 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his what? Glory. And beginning at? Moses. And all the prophets. As far as he opened. What he opened to them. Christ is suffering is glory. Christ is suffering is glory. Christ is suffering is glory. That's the hardest lesson to learn. Because your eyes tell you, because of Sunday school, I know that story. <laughs> David, Goliath. Pastor, don't tell me what I don't know. <laughs> yeah, now. And, uh, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he what? Expounded. He explained unto them in all the scriptures what? The things concerning himself. What did he explain to them? Everything. Did he explain everything? What did he explain? Remember what I said before. The Lord knoweth them that are his. So Jesus found the things concerning himself. What are the things that are his? The things concerning himself. The other things that were not concerning him, he just skipped. That one concerning me. Explain. Explain. He expounded it. The things concerning himself. Please, get this right. Who was explaining the things concerning himself? Jesus. Jesus. Which Jesus? The one that rose from the dead. Get this right. Jesus that rose from the dead was standing in front of them. How did he explain himself? Scriptures. Scriptures. How did he not explain himself? Look at me. Uh -uh. I beg now. You know how they killed me three days ago. Just look, look, look. The more you look, you don't see. Do you get you? You don't understand Jesus by looking at his physicality. Jesus himself explained himself in the book. That, that means the, the one that rose, at least it wasn't you that literally rose. The, the one that rose picked up the document of the Bible to explain what they were seeing. Because in looking at him, they saw they didn't see much. They didn't really see much. Someone said, if it was around in the days of Jesus, I would get it. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you, you, would, you wouldn't get it. You might have been the one to land the first blow. Someone said, no, I can't. Are you willing? Really? They were like, yes. But if he's really God, he should stop me. Yeah? Do you know Jesus revealed God to us? Because he says, he that has sent me, has sent the Father. So let me ask you, who oppresses who? Does God oppress man or does man oppress God? Hear yourself. Who has vendetta, God or man? It's man. Who is angry, God or man? Man. Who is angry with God? Is God angry with man or man angry with God? So when man is angry with God, this bit I'm going to have to say it and move on. When man is angry with God, you describe it as the anger of God. But the anger of God is not anger God has for man. It's the anger that man believes that God has for him. Amen. Yeah? Just like the Bible talks about the foolishness of God. The foolishness of God is not that God is foolish, but that man thinks that God is foolish. The wrath of God is not a wrath that God has for man, but that what man believes about God concerning man. Did, did you get that? Sorry. You get it? Good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Otherwise, if you read the Bible, well, God is angry. He's not. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Okay, sorry. Because uh, some of you are looking at me with glazed eyes. Leave your place up in Luke 24. Look at uh, First Corinthians. First Corinthians. You see, because the Lord knoweth them that are easy, and that's why we are only mentioning these things, so that you know the things about God you talk about. Look at 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Are you there? 1 verse 18. 1 18. Are you there? For the preaching of the 
cross is to them that is to them that perish what? Them that perish, what is that message? Foolishness. Unto us that are saved, it is what? So, what is the power of God? What you believe about the message? To us that are saved, it is the power. That same message, to those that perish, they call it what? Foolishness. So, foolishness of God is not that God is foolish, it's that man thinks that God is. The power of God is that man now believes that God is powerful. The one that is true about God is the one that saves. Look at it. Look at verse, um, that's, verse, uh, uh, that's verse 18. I want you to see something here. Um, I'm coming. Verse 22. For the Jews require what? A sign. And the Greeks seek after? Wisdom. But we preach? Christ. Christ what? Crucified. Unto the Jews what? A stumbling block. Is it a stumbling block? No. Except to the Jew. So it is Christ we are preaching, but to them it is? Stumbling block. And to the Greeks, it is what? Is it foolishness? Or they think it's foolishness? They think it's foolishness. But Christ is the power of God, actually. Yeah? Now, so it says, look at verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is what? The power of God. Christ is what? The, the wisdom of God. Christ is what? The power of God. Christ is what? The wisdom of God. But what do the Greeks call it? Foolishness. What do the Jews call it? Stumbling block. So, is there a stumbling block in God? Yes, to the Jew. Is there foolishness in God? Yes, to the Greek. But what really is there in God? Power to save. How do you discover that? Christ. Look at it now. So, when you say the foolishness of God, you're not talking about God, you're talking about man. Now, look at it again. Verse, um, look at verse 23. Because the what? You preach Christ. No, 20. Okay, we preach... No, 23. We preach Christ unto uh, crucified to the Jews a stumbling block unto the Greeks foolishness verse 24 to them that has called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of what? What is Christ really? The power of God. What is he really? The wisdom of God. What do the Jews call him? Stumbling block. What do the Greeks call him? Foolishness. So when you see the word foolishness who is he referring to? The Greeks. When you see the word stumbling block what is he referring to? Jew. So when he says I place a stumbling block in Zion. That stumbling block was replaced by God or sin by man. Do you get it now? Does God place a stumbling block? Or does man see a stumbling block? Do you get it now? Now, so look at it again. It says in verse 20, uh, 25, Because the what? Foolishness. foolishness of God. Is there foolishness in God? No. What is it referring to? The Greeks. So the expression foolishness of God means the way the Greeks see the message. Is God fully? No. no. So when we say the foolishness of God, we're not talking about God. It's not a character in God. It is an attribute seen by man in God. Now, so it says, yeah, uh, uh, God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God. Is God weak? No. no. So when you see weakness, so is there expression like weakness of God? Yes. What does it mean? The way men see him. Is there the expression foolishness of God? Yes. What does it mean? The way men see him. By the same token, you understand, wrath of God is not wrought in God, but the way men see him. Anger of God is not an anger inside God, but the way men see him. Do you get the point now? So I say, God is angry at you. You've taken, it, you've taken it to mean what does it mean? The anger of God is the unbelief in man. The wrath of God is the unbelief in man. The foolishness of God is the unbelief in man. Yeah? The weakness of God is the unbelief in man. But Christ is the power of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. Are you there? Go back to Luke 24 then. Yeah. So Luke, Luke 24. Luke 24. So it says in verse 26, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them uh, in all the scriptures the things concerning what? Himself. The things concerning what? Himself. Himself. Look at verse 20, or verse 44. 44, 44. And he said unto them, this is another occasion. He said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. you while I was yet with you, that all things must be what? Fulfilled. Which are written in the, in the law of Moses. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Yeah. So we are written in the law of Moses and in the Prophets. and in the Psalms. concerning. Me. So when you see, O oh Lord, arise, let your enemies be scattered. What's he talking about? The resurrection. God arise. Rise from the dead. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, it's not hmm. Everybody gathered against me. God was going to show himself strong today. You will die. Mm-mm. Do you get the point? Yes, so when you read in the Psalms, let God arise. It's not talking about God fighting people. It's only talking about God saving men. Wow. <laughs> Amen? Do you get the point? Otherwise, you see, why does the trouble start? Because we fail to see that it is concerning Christ. Christ. So I see that I'm in trouble. And I see the book of Psalms. And it's talking about trouble. Oh God, my ever-present help in time of trouble. And when my heart is overwhelmed, take me to the... And every of these people against me, let God arise. But my ever-present help is God that will raise Jesus in time of trouble when he's dead. Huh? <laughs> God, show yourself strong. What strength? To raise Jesus from that dead. Who is a God like unto thee? Yeah? Now, glorious in holiness. What holiness? The singular. Holy, holiness means a single, specific, dedicated, non, it's not general. That's what holiness means. Holy. It means it's not general. What is the holiness of a stiletto? To enter a girl's legs. Yeah? That's the holiness of a stiletto. Yeah? What is the holiness of a handbag? To get to a woman's shoulder. That's holiness of a handbag. It's pet. You don't brush your teeth with handbag. It's unholy. That's Bible language now. You say it's unholy. What is the, what is the holiness of lipstick? To be applied to the lips. You don't use it to color your tongue or on chum, you see? Okay, I didn't know about chicks. Okay, you use it on chicks too. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah? Yeah, but do you use it? Do you use it to eat your food? No. It's, it is unholy. For it. So when the Bible says holy, it, say, it means peculiar, specific, dedicated. It's like this. You remember December 26th when they're having this Christmas sales? You can see uh, uh, a pair of shoes on the window, whatever, of any store that you go to. And then while it's available for everybody to look at, it's general. It is unholy. Everybody can look at it. You then enter the store. You then pick that shoe. Try it on your leg and say, ah, this would be good for that uh, party with Paul. Huh? So you then take it. You take it to the counter and you pay. What has now happened is they will have to take it away from that place. It's now dedicated unto you to follow you home. So it's only unto you. That's holiness. Yeah? Now, so be- the beauty of holiness is the singular action of God by which those things about the death and the resurrection of Jesus, he will see to it. Yes, Amen. Praise God. Are you there? Now, so it says here, Verse 40, what? 44. Uh, it says, And I said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you that while I was here with you, that all these things which are written in the Lord of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning, concerning, Me. concerning. Me. So what he told them the second time was what he told them the first time is what he's telling us now. We must get that. The Lord knoweth those things that are his. And then I should depart from the iniquity of making what is not his, his. Yeah? Now, are you following? So when I make general what the Lord has made specific, then that's iniquity. When I retain specific what is made specific, that is cool. And that's my job as a minister. As a minister, I don't choose my topic. My topic is chosen concerning him. That I might know him, even the power of his resurrection. Now, so the Bible says here in verse 45, Then opened he their understanding. That word there means, like you say, somebody is having a child for the first time. You can say, like, talk about a child that opens the womb. So he opened for the first, that means for the first time, the disciples at last could now say, eh? I see. Oh, Zephaniah. Oh, Isaiah. Like a sheep led to the slaughter. It's not about having sheep. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Yeah, I see it now. Is it? Yeah. That was happening to them. For the first time, their eyes were open. To see it now, yeah? So, so it says, you open their understanding that they might understand, which is to synergize or to put things together. So you could now see that, eh? oh, I see it in Moses. Oh, I see it in Zephaniah. Yeah, I see it. And now you can now see the picture. Yeah? So they saw it. 
How did Jesus... And it was about this guy standing in front of them. It was right in front of them. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus appears to you today in a vision, do you know you will not understand him beyond your understanding of the Bible? Yes. It's what I'm trying to tell you. So if a person tells you, watch, yes, last night I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw that all the girls were queuing at the gate of heaven. And, in, uh, and Peter told them, what is that hearing doing here? <laughs> you cannot enter. Correct. My question would be, what are you doing at the gate of heaven? You're not a gate man. <laughs> that was my first question. My first question would not be, eh? You mean even sister so and so? What are the gate? No, no. I will ask of all the things you see in heaven, it was the gate you saw. <laughs> it's like being sent to study in England and all you saw is London Tower, London Bridge. And we ask you after 10 years in England, you say, ah, London Bridge. <laughs> if you see London Bridge. After that, we tell you, ah, oh boy, say something else. In London, for 10 years, London Bridge. Yeah. The same way too, you, that a person tells you, Yes, God told me I shouldn't wear earrings again. Relax. What does hearing have to do with Christ? What's the link? Yeah, you just say, it's good you saw a vision, you saw nothing. You saw something, but it's nothing. In that you've not seen concerning Christ. Yeah. Look, you don't like big earrings. Just say it. Now, so it's that. But you will notice, here is something interesting though. Here is something interesting and it's important. You see, the spiritual experiences you have are a product of the messages you listen to. Yeah, yeah. So true. yeah? the spiritual experiences you have, you discover that it will be difficult for anybody that listens to me, for example, to have a dream where they were at the gate of heaven. <laughs> because they know that if I ever told pastor... Pastor is going to cry. <laughs> that after all my years of struggle <laughs> on you. <laughs> it's only the gates. <laughs> when the Pauline epistles say you are seated with Christ <laughs> on the throne. You didn't see throne, no. Glory. It's gates. <laughs> so, my, my, my first thing would be, you see your life. <laughs> gates. Do you get So, you don't get scared by these things any longer. You are after that he that is about said, search is concerning me. So that I must understand what the book says about him. So understand him. See, do you know how Jesus magnified this word? He was there, resurrected. I don't know about you. I'm not sure I will have had that amount of decorum. I just rose from the dead. Ah, I will make it to the center of Jerusalem. And I say, Pilate, <laughs> Papa, Pilate, look. <laughs> ah, see, who's now standing? Sea <laughs> level. That, that, that's what I would like to have now. <laughs> that's a sea level. Sea level. <laughs> eh, say, look, the more you look, the less you see. You thought you could kill me. No. <laughs> but that's not the way Jesus was. Jesus, after resurrection, was now, okay, let's now do the real job. This Bible now can open to you. Why did Jesus rise from the dead? So the Bible can become an open book. Yeah, so that this world at last can become open. He rose, not so that somebody says, Ah, I need to take a trip to Israel. Have you been to Israel? They took me to where Jesus was buried. That is the sepulchre. You see nothing, you only see through the book. Jesus Himself, He opened Moses, He opened the prophets, He opened the Psalms. So the Psalms are not for dealing with people. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the psalm is how God dealt with sin. My enemies was my sin. It scattered. He blotted it out. The handwriting of ordinances against me by that resurrection. Scattered. They couldn't stand before him when he rose. Thank you, Lord. Praise God anyway. So, so it says here, uh, it's, it's concerning him. Second Timothy. Look at 2 Timothy. 
So, the Bible is about Christ. It concerns him. 2 Timothy, are you there? 2 Timothy and chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 15. And that from a child, from a what? Child. Thou hast known the holy which Jesus called Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. From a child, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able, there's an ability in them, which are able to make you Why? unto what? Salvation. If you read Moses, what should you understand? Salvation. Salvation. If you read uh, Numbers, Exodus, Leviticus, what should you understand? Salvation. And what are the parameters of salvation? The death of Christ and the resurrection. Is that clear? Yeah. So, what is the wisdom in the Bible? Someone said, if you read your Bible, God will just give you wisdom about how to conquer the city of London. Ah, uh ah. -uh. The wisdom in the Bible is how God conquered the city of our sin. How he delivered me from the power of darkness and translated me into another kingdom, that of a son. If you want to conquer the city of London, I beg, go do exams, <laughs> go to school, <laughs> have right associations, yeah, uh, you know, work in good society, know how to get along with others, know how to be political and to be politicized, know how to, yeah, know how to deal with the maneuvers of men, because the city is not a seminary. They don't open the Bible. Praise God, amen. Now, blessed are you if you understand that. That, that saves you from going to this Bible to say, hmm, God has shown me how to make money. Inside a book concerning his son. <laughs> do, do you understand what we are saying? This is, you know, we, I talked before about you discipling men. What is our subject matter? Christ. So when he becomes, see, think about it. I don't know about you. Whether you, if you work, you understand that your CEO, by his title, has more money than you. Yeah? yeah? So if God was the one giving it, and he bypassed you to give more to your CEO than to you. That doesn't say much that is good about God, right? Mm. Yeah? So to say God gives men money is to call him a bad father. Mm. Yeah? To call him bad because he just bypassed you and gave it to others. Now, no, no, no. There's a way they make money. Come after this lesson, I can tell you. Now, but, but there's a way they make money. So when we open this book, our content is Christ. The subject matter. This is what he called endure hardness. You stay in the parameters of the glory of his son. Stay in it. Like there's nothing else. Yeah? So it says here, yeah, yeah? It will make you wise unto salvation. It will make you wise unto salvation. Is it not? Acts 26. Look at Acts 26. Acts 26. Acts 26. Are you there? Acts 26. This is Paul. Is the one talking? Acts 26. Are you there? Yeah. Verse 22. Acts 26, 22. Having therefore obtained help of God. Obtained what? Help. I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and what? Saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses did say shall come. So what did Paul say? Exactly what Moses said. What did Paul say? Exactly what all the prophets said. Now what did he say they said? Look at it in the next verse. What did he say they said? And it should rise from the dead and show light unto the people. And to the Please, is there a consistency about what the Bible is about? Yes. yes. So that Christ should die and rise from the dead and should show light to the people. What light? To show to them what this document is about. You can go back here and say, ah, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. And Paul said, I'm saying no other thing but that. Saying no other thing. So we are ministers. We minister to men. We minister the same thing. The same thing as who? The same thing as Paul. Who said the same thing as Moses? Who said the same thing as David? Who said the same thing as Habakkuk? Who said the same thing as Zephaniah? Who said the same thing as Nahum? 
Yeah, he said the same thing. We said the same things as Jesus. Because when Jesus himself opened the book, he said, it's concerning me. Moses said, it's, Moses wrote about him. He said it's about him. Peter said it's about, so Paul, Paul said it's about him. He told Timothy it's about him. That's many witnesses, right? Mm-hmm. Is it not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about, so when you open the book, it's about him. It's about him. And there are specifics about him. It is him dead, risen, to show light. Yeah, him dead, risen, to show light. It's a, it's a, it's a, that is holy. It's a specific, dedicated message. It's not everything. It's specifics. Hallelujah. It's specific. Now, so, he, he, he told us what to find in the book. Yeah, he told us what to find. Look at Ephesians 3. Ephesians and chapter 3. In fact, Romans 1. Romans 1, Romans 1, Romans 1. Romans 1, Romans 1. Romans 1 verse 1. Paul, a what? A servant, a born servant, a slave of Jesus Christ. Called apostle. Separated unto what? The gospel of God. The what? What was Paul preaching? The The good news of God. Now let's see what is the good news of God. Which he had? So the good news that he preached was a? Promise. Promise. Promised when? Before. How? By the prophet. Where? In the Holy Scriptures. What is the gospel? What he promised through the prophets in the scriptures. Therefore, since it's a promise, I believe it. Mm. You don't do a promise. If you're the recipient, you believe it. Mm. Yeah? You don't do a promise, you believe it. Then the one that is the keeper of the promise does it. So what is the gospel? The fact that I do nothing, but I see him do what he said he will do. And what he said he will do is what is said by the prophets. Now, what is it concerning? Let's read it on. Verse 3. Concerning? Wow. So, did the prophets prophesy? Yes. Yes. Where is it written? In the Holy Scriptures, verse 2. I'm back back to verse 2 now. Did the prophets prophesy? Yes. Where is it written? In the Holy Scriptures. What is the subject matter? Concerning Concerning his son Jesus. Concerning who? His son Jesus. Look at verse 4. The person they wrote about was declared what? Son of God with power. How? According to the spirit of that unique, certain, specific, definite action. That's holiness, yeah? The spirit of holiness is not like was calf, right? Glory, yeah? So, it says, according to the spirit of the unique, setting apart, the de- definite assignment, like a stiletto in a store belongs to a woman, like the handbag belongs to her, right? Like, uh, like you use the lipstick for the cheekbone and whatever it is you use it for again. Lips, right? Now, in a, yeah. hey, if I'm wrong, she told me. Yeah, uh, it's not been babbling. I'm a good student of her. Now, so, you see, now that's the way it works. She told me, I'm saying it now. Imagine if what she said is wrong now, yeah? Yeah, don't worry, don't let's don't show us so people will not know all over the world who it is. <laughs> now, good, but you get the point. So, Romans 1 and verse 4 it says, It's declared to be the Son of God according to the Spirit of all. That means, according to that definite, specific, peculiar, unique distinction. That's all it means. What is the unique distinction about him? By the what? Resurrection, Resurrection from the dead. How will we know what this book is about? The one that God raises from the dead. That's what the whole book is about. All them promises. All them promises. Now, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So, we now know the Bible is... Con- the, Bi- the Bible, when you look at it correctly, it's concerning his son. Con- two things about that son, the death and the glory. And that's... It, Paul now said, I preach the gospel of God. He now told us the parameters of that gospel. That it was Jesus declared, shown to be that son uniquely in that act that distinguishes him. The resurrection. Yeah. So, the great activity of the Bible. Everything about the Bible was leading up to one thing. The resurrection. It couldn't be the death because it wasn't the only one that died. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, what makes it the good news? is that thing that was peculiar, unique, specific, dedicated to him. So it was declared, Romans 1, 4, to be the son of God. Is that son that we've been talking about? Is that child born, son given? Unto us a child is born, a son is given. How was he given? In the resurrection. 
The resurrection was how we got the son. The incarnation is how we got the child. A child born in Bethlehem. Mary's born child. Yeah, that's the incarnation. But that wasn't God giving you anything. What God gave us is in the resurrection. And that's what we preach as the gospel of God. Yeah, that's the gospel of God. The particular, the peculiar, specific, definite. Everything else I preach must be from that. Because the Lord knoweth that which is his. He was the one that raised Jesus from the dead. That is the act that God shared with nobody. When he says, I will never share my glory with anyone. He was talking about the resurrection. The act of the resurrection will be mine alone. Glory to God! Yeah, so it will be mine alone. And he has done it. Hallelujah. For this, we preach. That's our commission. We preach. Now, so it says, it says I want you to say it. Yeah? It's what the book is about. Where did I tell you to open to? Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Verse 19. 19. It says, For the Son of God, Jesus, 19 now, <laughs> the, you know, I told you, going, I promised you we were going to open a lot. Now, for the Son of God, Jesus, Christ. who was Christ. among you by Christ. what did they preach? The Christ. Son of God, Christ. They didn't preach dress length, they didn't preach skirt, they didn't preach earrings, they didn't preach streets of gold or streets of diamond, they didn't preach, uh, all they preached was the Son. In the sun, all that you needed to know about clothing, you would do. And it's not much to know. Yeah, just to be clear. You like to wear Sainsbury's? Wait. You like to wear GQ? Wait. What watch did Jesus use? Henceforth know we no man. After the flesh. Why do I care if you wore watch or not? We preach Christ. Did he have bed? If you like your husband with a bed, let him grow one. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Jesus is uh, uh, praise God, amen. <laughs> now, so he said, so he said, yeah. Did Jesus keep a bed? Likely, he didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, very easy. Yeah, uh, you know, you don't say a man of God and then you now live like a spirit being. No, <laughs> Pray, amen. Praise God. Just <laughs> pour holy water on me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My Lord, cool down. Is that cool? Amen. Praise God. Second, Second Corinthians 1. <laughs> 1, 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached. Notice what Paul said he preached. Among you by us. Can, is it the same thing? Was it one person or many people preach it? By us. The same thing. Yeah. By us. Even by me and who? So and Timothy. So did you, why not tell Timothy the same thing you've heard? Tell others. What will he tell them? Christ. Yeah? So, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy preach exactly what? Same thing. Yeah? Preach by us. Where are we? Was not what? Yes. yes and? Name. But in him was? Yes. Verse 20 is where I'm going. For all, all the promises of God. What promises? According to Romans. The promises that were written by the prophets long ago. Concerning his son. So, all the promises of God are what? Yes and? Amen. Amen means what? Done. Done. All the promises done. How was it done? It was marked out or declared to be the son of God with power by the spirit of holiness through the resurrection from the dead. So how was it done? By resurrecting Jesus from the dead. The promises were fulfilled. So all them promises. So let me ask you now. Did God promise them the land of Canaan? Yes. yes what is the land of Canaan? Christ. 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 Yeah. It's taking them to the promised land. Yes, the, pro the land in that promise. Hebrews 11 says, Abraham looked for a city whose builder and architect was God. That they that said to us since they look for a heavenly country. That heavenly country is not a planet. It's the resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> Glory! Yeah, it's the resurrection of Jesus. The re the, I am already on prime estate. Yeah, so when you preach this cause gospel, you preach it with all audacity like a rich man. Yeah, there is no wealth beyond this one now. 
It is the well. See, Abraham with cattle and suya, he left suya behind to follow prime estate. You have come unto the heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God, to the spirit of just men made perfect. We've come to the country that Abraham looked for. We are reaching him. Hallelujah. Now, so he say, he says here, he says, all the promises are yes. Amen in Christ. All the promises are yes and amen. Now, this is what we preach. This is what we preach. It produces that effect in men. The effect it produces, it has a lifting power. Yeah. It reminds men about the absoluteness of God's keeping power. That the Savior keeps the saved. Is the guarantee of what he has done. That all he promised, when there was nobody to force him or make him compliant, he complied. What a God. Hallelujah. See, look at Micah. Micah chapter 7. Micah. Micah, Micah, Micah. You know where Micah is, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I, said, I just want to give you guys trouble by asking you to look for Micah. Have we found Micah? Mm. <coughs> I should help you out. Micah is before Abakuk. <laughs> Micah is after Jonah. Are you there, Micah? If in doubt, check your table of contents. Are, are you in Micah? <laughs> I said after Micah is there. Are you there? Good. Micah chapter 7. Micah what? Chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys trouble by telling you to go to Micah. Yeah, I could have picked any book. Yeah, Micah 7. Are you there? Micah 7? Please look at verse 18. Micah 7 verse 18. Are you there? Who is a what? God. God like unto Indeed. that pardoneth iniquity. So what is it that is peculiar, unique about God? He pardons iniquity. iniquity. Who is a God like unto you? He pardons iniquity. Yeah. And passed by the Transgression. transgressions of the remnants of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger, anger forever because he delighted in Mercy. He will look at it, verse 19. He will turn again. again. He will have compassion. He will subdue. Our iniquity. Does God subdue? Yes. Does God subdue? Yes. What does He subdue? Our sin. He doesn't subdue us, He subdues our sin. Yes. 